Hello everybody, welcome back to the Medical Projects YouTube channel. If you are new around here, my name is Olivia and here on this channel we produce tons of content to assist you with getting your dream spot at medical school and I try and show you what medical school is actually like. So if you do like the sound of that, do make sure you have subscribed to our YouTube channel and turn that notification bell on so that you can be notified every single time we post and also make sure to check out all of our social media links, we're very active on there and we're happy to answer any questions you might have. So so today I want to talk to you all about the different routes you can take to get into medical school to prove to you that there is no correct way of getting in and also I've got some of my medical school friends to share with you their own journey into medical school to show you that if medicine doesn't work out the first time around straight from your A-levels there are always other options. So what are the different ways you can get into medical school? Well the first is the traditional route where you go from your A-levels and you apply in October of year 13 and if you get accepted you commence medical school the following September or maybe the year after if you've chosen to defer and you go into a five or six year program depending on whether you're intercalating. Another route you can take to get into medical school is taking a foundation year and then going into medicine. So many medical schools such as King's offer a six year program and that's without intercalating so if you intercalate it will be a seven year program and the reason it is a six year program is because many universities are providing widening participation programs to enable those to get into medical school that have come from schools where it is a lot more difficult to get the required grades for medical school and they're really targeted at widening participation in medicine so in that first year you'll take things a little bit more slowly and really make sure you're nailing the basic sciences before you get into the nitty-gritty of medical school another way you can get into medical school is by doing a degree before so you might choose to do a science subject like I did like biomedical sciences and that means you have a lot more universities open to you if you choose to go in at a graduate level so you can apply to a five-year undergraduate program like I did at Kings or you can apply to a four-year graduate entry program which is a lot lot more competitive and it's very very intense and there are many people that are going into medical school as a graduate who haven't got a science background so I guess my overall point is that there is no straightforward route into medicine everyone has their own journey and one of the things that I've absolutely loved about medical school is meeting all these different people meeting them from different backgrounds some people have done PhDs some people have been working in industry for the last eight years and come back to university some are fresh out of A-levels, it's really really wonderful and it's a really lovely community. Everyone is on their own journey so if unfortunately you do experience a rejection or you think you know I'm not sure if this is right for me and I'll reconsider it in a few years, that is okay. So in my own experience when I was doing A-levels I kind of toyed with the idea of doing medicine but I never fully committed to it so I kind of wrote it off and thought I want to be a scientist. I always loved science, I was a massive nerd, loved me some biology so I went and did biomedical sciences. I studied that for three years at the University of Bristol and it was the absolute making of me. I made so many friends, I learned so many skills, I lived in the most beautiful city which I miss every single day and it was honestly nothing but an amazing journey for me and it's really shaped me as a person today. And so I decided to apply to medicine in my final year of university, had my interviews that winter and then I got accepted pretty soon after that. So I graduated from Bristol in July of 2019 and then I started at King's College London in September 2019. Now I want to share with you three benefits that I got from studying a degree before going into medical school. So the first one was that I already knew how to study pre pretty effectively. So I spent the first two years in my biomed degree kind of fumbling along and figuring out how to take notes, how to write scientific essays and just how to manage my time in general. So by the time I got to medical school I'd already pretty much nailed that and I definitely have had to adapt my learning style in medical school and I've started using new programs such as Notion which have been amazing and so although this is always changing and I'm always modifying my approach I definitely don't experience the same level of stress that I had in Bristol when I was just overwhelmed with all the work and the expectations and just like writing essays at an academic level so that was very very tricky initially. The second benefit I think is that I was able to decide whether medicine was really really right for me and I was able to do that because in my three years at undergrad level I was able to do some more work experience, I was able to volunteer, 
I was able to do some more shadowing in hospital and I was just able to experience a lot more which meant that my resolve to study medicine was a lot stronger and I think that really showed in my personal statement and my interviews and now I'm just so happy at medical school because I've really taken the time to find out whether it is truly the right thing for me and the third and final benefit I found from studying a degree before medicine is that I just feel way more confident in myself and my abilities and my skills um believe it or not I was quite shy in my undergrad especially in my first year and I was a bit unsure I was just very insecure about my academic ability and I just constantly felt overwhelmed all the time and I'm not gonna lie those thoughts haven't just vanished in medical school the imposter syndrome is so real but I just feel way more confident talking to people um, I've done some work as a HCA so it means that I'm way more confident speaking to patients managing difficult situations and difficult patient interactions and I just feel way more settled and confident and I'm not sure I would have felt that way if I'd gone straight into medical school and I do want to say that this is just my personal experience some people go straight into medical school and it works absolutely perfectly for them and that's why I want to emphasize that everyone is different I just know for me this was the journey I was supposed to be on so for the next part of the video I really want you guys to hear from some other medical students and hear about their individual journeys into medical school to prove to you that there are just so many avenues you can take so if medicine doesn't work out for you in the next year or two years it doesn't mean that that door is closed forever hi guys my name's Lydia and I've just finished my first year at med school getting to this point was not the easiest journey. I didn't get the A-level results that I wanted so I ended up going to Southampton to do a biology degree. I ended up finishing that degree with a 2-1 and once I'd finished, I started applying for graduate medicine. However, I didn't get in straight away. I was rejected from graduate medicine in 2019 because of my low UCAT score. And then I had to reapply again and I finally got a place to study at Southampton in 2020. It was definitely a long journey to get to the point of actually getting into med school. But I definitely think having that biology degree and extra three years at uni was the best thing for me. I didn't know it at the time, but I think I really needed that extra time at uni. I learned so much um, during that time at uni and I made so many friends and made so many memories so I do not regret doing that degree at all and I think it was the best thing for me at the time. When I got rejected from medicine after uni I ended up training to be a science teacher for a year which was an amazing experience and I have that qualification under my belt now and all these times where you know things got in my way and I ended up having to do other courses or wait even longer to get into medicine actually gave me so many skills that are perfect for a career in medicine. Whether that's understanding how I study best or teaching skills I've built up in my teaching job. These are transferable skills that I can take into my career in medicine so it absolutely wasn't a waste of time. There are so many benefits to doing medicine later on and lots of people do it so don't see rejection as a negative thing. See it as redirection and an opportunity to do other things that are probably going to give you skills that you can take into a career in medicine eventually. Hi guys my name is Rumbi. I am a junior doctor in the NHS and I'm here to talk to you guys a little bit about my untraditional route into medicine. So I first applied for medicine when I was 18. Um, unfortunately, I didn't get a place at that time, but I, I knew that a second option for me would be midwifery, something I would enjoy. Um, and so I applied, got into midwifery that same year, which is amazing. Um, so I did my midwifery degree, enjoyed it for the most part. And in the second year, that towards the end of the second year of my midwifery degree, the beginning of the third year of midwifery, I uh, applied to study medicine again and I got in this time. And I think it was really helpful for me having done another degree. Um, I learned so much, particularly in midwifery, you just learn about how the NHS works, um, working with other people, interprofessional working, all the skills that are really helpful in medicine. So I think it boosted my application quite a bit that I was a student midwife at the time. Um, and then once I started studying medicine, I was also working as a midwife. So having that other degree really benefited me and it helped me financially um, in the UK as a graduate. You're not, you don't have the same recourse to student finance as you do when it's your first degree, to start when medicine is your first degree. So um, having that midwifery grounding really helped. And it just meant that I knew how to do certain basic skills, blood pressure, bloods, all these things that when you're learning so many new things, having one less thing being new made such a difference. So yeah, um, if you haven't 
got into medicine the first time, if you're thinking about applying and looking at second options, fear not. Medicine is always an option. Like I've met people who studied art and worked um, as teachers or other professions and then came back to study medicine. So it is always an option. Uh, I hope this is helpful. You can, uh, if you want to talk to me about it further, I'm on Instagram as at Rumbi the Medic. You're very welcome to send me a message and I will reply. Hi everyone, I'm Karishma. I'm a first year postgrad medical student at the University of Edinburgh. My first degree was in mental health nursing. I've been a nurse for around five years now. At a certain point in my career, I decided to apply to medicine. That is how I arrived there is a whole other story. But anyway, during my research, I stumbled upon my current degree, which is aimed at healthcare professionals. It's online, it's part-time and it's distance learning, which is fantastic because it means I can continue to work as a nurse. I, um, I work for about 20 hours a week. Um, I do that because I need to survive, but also it helps me keep my skills up. Um, one of the biggest advantages that uh, mental health nursing has given me in my current degree is knowing how to communicate with patients. I cannot stress this enough, but knowing how to talk to a patient, knowing how to take a history, knowing how to conduct a basic assessment, knowing how to comfort a patient, knowing how to calm them down, all these things are going to be a huge help. It is absolutely crucial as a medical student on placement and as a doctor. Some of the other things that have been of help is knowing how to do bloods, knowing how to take blood pressure, familiarity with some of the drugs, all of that has been helpful to me in my GP placement. Um, so yeah, I have uh, just finished first year. I'm starting second year in September, which is very exciting. Um, and yeah, I, I want to encourage you, you know, there isn't one route into medicine. Um, I didn't get the five A's in school that is required and it's okay if you didn't either. As long as you're willing to put the work in now, um, you should absolutely go for it. If I can be of any help, if I can answer any questions, please let me know. You can DM me and I'll do my very best. So thank you to all of the wonderful medical students that contributed in today's video. And I really hope you took something away from hearing about their individual experiences. I really hope you guys enjoyed today's video. Do make sure once again that you have subscribed to our YouTube channel and follow us over on our Instagram page. Thank you guys so much for watching and I'll talk to you in a new video very soon. Bye.